see we have 10% for readability, 90% for functionalities. And for readability, we ask you to modulize your code, give your variable uh, some meaningful names, and so on. Right? We will look at your code. All right, so uh, in order to show you this one, I want to give you an example. I asked uh, one student from uh, maybe this section, maybe next sec uh, another section. He allowed me to use his code as an example. It's from the lab. And um, I want to show you how to modulize your code and debug your code. All right, this question is from our lab. It's in here. This is the lab three. The question is, if I give you a bunch of numbers, right, and end with negative one, then I give you a target. Your goal is to erase the element which matches the target, then sort the input and output, right? If it doesn't match any of the element, output not found. As I can see, there are over uh, around 200, right? exactly 200, except so I believe most of you can do it. But what I want to emphasize is we need to modulize our code, all right? This is someone sent me and uh, uh, he said he spent maybe one hour debugging the code, but he couldn't find where it goes wrong. This is his first version. All right, so as you can see, he writes almost everything in just the main function, right? Everything inside the main function. This is very bad because it's very bad for testing and the readabilities. So as we can see, for this problem, it basically constructs of different parts, right? First one, read, right? First one, read. Then as I can see, it's matching with some number. Uh, again, it's better to give a variable name, just a B, right? Sometimes I do it in class because I just want to save some time typing. But for your, for your um, homework or something, you give it a meaningful name like target, right? And then this B should be replaced with target, right? And as you can see, what this student is doing is they are matching the uh, iterating through the numbers, right? And then if it matches with the target, it will do basically erase, right? I, I don't need to uh, look at the details about this one. And after erase, it looks like the bubble sorting we have written in class. And uh, after sorting, it will output the final one, right? The basic flow is correct. Read, erase, then sort, then output, right? In the output, it is uh, saying, okay, it, it basically remembers the original size, right? If the final size, is still the original size. It means it didn't fund, right? Because it didn't erase anything. Otherwise, you output this, uh, output the whole array. All right, let's do it uh, together, how to modulize this code. So first part, quite easy, is this print, right? This print function, we can make it a real quick one. Void print. And this is how he implemented this print function. And as you can see, we need the vector none. All right, let's copy this one. I don't know why he used a long, anyway, long called a none. Vector, oh, I believe he is putting here. So this one should be up front. Yeah, right. This is his print function. And uh, as we mentioned, when we do a print, right? Uh, let's, let me finish this part first. Here, instead of doing this, we do a print our num. We said if we want to save some space and uh, be efficient, we want it to be a reference, right? So that we don't need to copy all these elements. And also because we don't want to modify this num, we just print it, we wanted this one to be a const, right? So this one should be our print function. It should be a const and uh, this ampersand, right, reference. All right, so how can we test this program? How can we test it? The very easy thing is, okay, before we write anything, we test it here. For instance, we can test, is our print function correct? What we can write is something very simple, right, one, two. We want it to print just the one and two. And I put a return zero here because all the remaining code, I, will, I don't want it to execute, right? The only thing I want to test is the print function. Is it correct? So when, whenever I write this one, I, I'm expecting 
one and a two printed on my terminal, right? And also I can test more, for instance, what if I want to test uh, one, two, three, four, right? So it should, it should work, right? Let's run it. Now it says a vector index out of bounds, right? It's because this function is so simple. It's very easy to catch the errors, right? By looking at it, we don't want to debug. What's the problem? What's the problem in this code? Index out of bounds. Plus one, right? You don't need the plus one. If the size is two, when it comes in, I should be less than two and it should be zero and one. So if we isolate this code, it's very easy to see what's the problem in here. Very long code, you're very hard to uh, see whether this one is wrong, right? So any questions on this one? How can I test, right? No, it, it seems obvious, right? It seems not so benefit. Uh, we don't get so many benefit from it, but in the future, when we learn um, more new things like the uh, how we can re-implement a function, right? For instance, for now you write it this way. How about in the future we have another print function, right? I don't remember if you guys can still. Uh, let's see, we have this way to access each element inside a vector, right? What we can do is writing some code like this. So as long as it's a print function, right? We can easily replace an, an old print function with a new print function in our code. So we isolate them so that we can improve every functionalities right, in the future. And now what we can do is we can replace this print function with our new print function, right? As long as it's, uh, it's correct. And also if that is case, we could also test is print to correct or not. So we can stop it and uh, yeah, because this guy didn't print a new line here. So it is first to print one and two, then print to one, two, three, four, right? Uh, let me fix it by adding a new line. So it's easy to see. It's okay here. Yeah, as you can see, it, it can uh, print correctly. So. In this way, we have successfully tested one uh, functions, right? Let's do it uh, for another one, make it more complex, which is the bubble sorting, right? Bubble sorting, bubble sorting seems more complex. Card bubble sorting and copy his code here. Still, uh, we need the vector. By the way, because we want to reorder the vectors, right? So we want it to be a reference. Otherwise, if it's copy, we are modifying the numbers in our functions, not the outside, right? If we want to modify the factors outside of your function, you need a reference, right? So assuming this one is correct, but it's still too many code. It's very hard to debugging. So that's also why I implement the function. If you guys can remember, I uh, call it maybe bubble one scan, right? Maybe I call it this way. And uh, what I want to do is I want to erase this part to here and I call it bubble one scan our num, right? Why do we do that? The reason we do that is now we don't need to test the bubble. We can test the bubble one scan, right? Let's test the one bubble, a bubble one scan. And uh, let me, uh, instead of doing this way, let me create a new one. Call it V equals to two and one. We can do bubble one scan V, then print V. So instead of verifying is our bubble sorting correct, we can first check is our one scan correct, right? Or even we can do 
uh, even better, right? We can do something like void uh, swap position. We can make it here. I want to move it to here. And we need the position P, right? We want to swap position of our numbers with the position P. It basically does what is uh, it's doing is we can put a comment here, right? We can say it's a swapping the P's position with P plus one position, right? We can put a comment here saying what we are doing. Then instead of testing bubble one sort, we can test swap position first, right? It's basically swapping the uh, the element of uh, the pth element with the P plus one's element, right? We can also write something here, right? We can say, What this function is doing is swapping the p position with the p plus one's position. So what we can do is we can verify if this function implemented correct. And the way we can do is we can put it one here, right? How about that? And then it's still out of our bounds, right? So if you look at here, when we put a one inside, it says out of bounds. Look at it again. The size is two, right? We put the position one here. This swap is out of bounds. The reason is P has plus one, right? And in that way, we have to making make sure P is less than number dot size minus one, right? It cannot be the last element. If it's last element and you want to swap with the next element, but we don't have the next element, so we cannot swap. So it has to be uh, less than size minus one, right? So we cannot swap like this, but we can only swap with the, this is the index, right? Index zero is the two, index one is the one. So P has to be, less than one. So we can test this one. Is the swapping correct? And as you can see, swap correct, right? Now swap correct, but we have one condition, right? Because after we test it, we see, okay, there will be some problems. It is because we have to making sure P is less than size minus one. So if we look at here, right? If we look at here, we see the problem. The problem of one scan, right? It's a scanning from beginning to the end. When the P is the last element, you are comparing number of P with P plus one, but there's no P plus one, right? It's out of, out of your bounds. So it, it has to be size minus one. And if it's a, a greater, we do swap, right? Next, we are trying to verify is bubble one sort correct. How about this one, right? So how about it's one, five, three, two, right? So whenever you give a test case, we call this one a test case, right? And uh, you run your functions. Oh, there's no zero here. You run your functions. You are expecting someone to be, to be printed, right? What is your expected print? Expect what? Is, are you expecting one? three, five, two, or expecting two, five, or one, two, three, five. Which one are you expecting? The first one, or the second one, or the last one? Right. So when you write a test case, you have to know the input, and you have to know the output. Otherwise, you cannot know whether your implementations are correct or not. So as a programmer, maybe most of your time is not spent in coding. Most of your time are, expect, uh, are spent in, in your 
writings, right? Especially in your in your papers. For instance, if your input is like this, right? So in your one scan of bubble sorting, first your i equal to zero, you compare with this guy. If it's less than, you don't change anything. So it's one, five, three, two. And then i equal to one, right? Then you compare with next guy. If it's greater than, you will do swap. It becomes one, three, five, two. Now i becomes two. You compare with next one. It will becomes one, three, two, five, right? So as a programmer, most of your time are spent writing this kind of stuff, right? Doing this by hand, one by one, and doing it for the simple cases. And after you're getting the simple cases, you know you are expecting this one, right? If your one scan didn't give you these numbers, this sequence, you know your implementation is wrong. So you are expecting the middle one, right? One, three, two, five. You are expecting one, three, two, five. And then when you run it, uh, you can see, yeah, it's correct, right? One, three, two, five. And then you can continue. How about the bubble, right? Is bubble correct? If it's bubble, you know you are expecting one, two, three, five, right? And then you can run it again. And uh, yeah, it's, it's outputting the correct one. Right, so uh, the reason I want to mention this is I want your program to be modulized, modulized into smaller and a smaller and a smaller piece of code. And for every smaller piece, right, for every smaller piece like bubble one scan, this kind of functions, test it. How can we test? We can write very, very simple code to test it. Okay. Otherwise, if you twingle, twist every functionalities with every logic together, right, like this, put everything in the main function like this one does, it's very hard to do debugging. It's very hard to see where is your problem. So this is some technique you should learn. And the, especially in the large companies, right? Whenever you write a function like this, whenever you write a function, you need to write a test case for them, maybe a bunch of test cases, right? Test, uh, for example, erase function, right? You need to erase the first element, erase in the middle, erase the last element. You need to test all these kind of scenarios to verify is your functions correct or not. So that is the basic one. Sometimes we call it test-driven uh, programming, right? Sometimes we write this kind of test first. What is your input? What is your output? Then you start writing your code and then run them, test them. After you test them, you can combine them with your, with your logic, right? After that, it, everything will be quite easy. Just combine them. And uh, as I said, you need to do some, sometimes you need to do it by hand, right? Writing down the process, how every process goes. And uh, another breakpoints, right? You should learn how to use the breakpoints. Whenever you run it, you step into the functions and check. And then step into the functions, right? Then check what is the P, right? Sometimes P go out of range, you will know. Because uh, in here, in, in this, this part, it will tell you what is the value of every variables, right? It's very important. You need to check this one. And when we go to the recursions next class, you will see it's very important if you, uh, if you guys can see this one, right? It's very important. Go back and check how to use the breakpoints. Right? They, these are some of the techniques to help you write a very large programs, especially for, the, for example, your homework, right? You need to learn to split them into smaller piece of modules and test every modules, then combine them and your problem will be solved. Otherwise, if you think everything together, right? right like this one, oh, I need to match, I need to erase, I need to sort, I need to print. If you think everything together, that will be a nightmare. But if you think them as a function, right? Every function, it's very simple. It's just a swap, right? It's just a swap. After swap, it's just a scan, right? You combine them one by one, split your problem into smaller ones, test them. So that is the uh, something I want you to exercise in your homework, right? It's also 10% of your readability, right? 10% of your readability. Some, some places write comments like this, right? Modulize your code, 
give your variable some meaningful names, right? Instead of A, B, C, D, give them some meaningful names so that your code will be readable by others, right? If someone see your code like this, it will be very easy to understand. All right, any questions? No? All right, so let's go to today's content. So today we are going to learn arrays. So arrays are very similar to factors, right? But arrays are, sometimes I would say it's more hard to use because you guys have to fully understand what are pointers, what are address in your memory, then you will be able to understand arrays. But for factors, you can totally ignore that, right? And, uh, but for the other parts, array and factors are exactly the same. They keep a bunch of data in continuous memory. So as long as you know the first location of your memory, then you will be able to access the remaining parts. And uh, we say arrays are faster. Right? Arrays are faster. It is the old C style. In the C code, you can see this. And in C++, maybe in the uh, newer standards, they even produce, uh, they even propose a new way. Oh, where's my, this one? All right, so let me write it down. First, include the factor. So in the uh, new C++ standard, they have something called include array. This is the array library, all right? And uh, in array library, they have something like this, standard array. It is a class defined by the new standard of uh, C++. But in the old C way, you don't need it. In the C way, you don't need it. What is an array? Array is just a bunch of numbers, right? We call it array 10, right? This is the C style of array, right? So it is exactly the same as factor of integer array size 10, right? These two are exactly the same. The only thing that's different is array has more functionalities to it, but the array don't. A factor have more functionality to it. And uh, there are a few things you need to be uh, careful. First one, array cannot be resized. Whenever you give it a size, it is fixed and then you cannot resize it. So whenever you write a, de declare an array, you give it a size. For example, give it a size 10, right? Give it a size 10. It means 10 doubles. This is the syntax for de declaring an, uh, an array. It is a salary, it's 10 doubles. And uh, it, it can be compared to our factors, right? Their syntax are very similar. And the arrays can never change size. So how can you get the size of an array? How can you get a size of an array? How can you get a size of a factor? Right? Factors are simple. We could say dot size, right? Because in factor, it's a class. It can not only contains the, uh, the data itself, it also contains the size and also many other functions. But for arrays, we don't. So for the C style array, we cannot write code like this because it's a just an array. It's not a class. Don't have a function called a size. We cannot do this one. But what we can do is we can get size. Uh, no, that is a function I write. Size of array. All right, let's run it. So as you can see, the array two size is 10, right? The, uh, the factor size is 10 and the array size is 40. So 40 means the number of bytes it contains. So as I said, whenever we declare whether in an array or a factor, it is the same. It's just a bunch of the space in your memory. It's continuous, right? It allocates some space for your array, ARR. So in this array, it's just an address. The name itself 
the array name itself is an address. Its address pointing to the first element of the array, all right? So it's pointing to array zero. Array zero is here. Array one is here and so on. Because this guy has 10 elements, right? So at the end, the last element is array nine. And each one is an integer. Each one is an integer. Integer is 32 bits, right? 32 bits is four bytes. 32 bits is four bytes. So if it's 10 elements, the total would be 40 bytes. That is our output, 40 here. All right, let's repeat. Array name is an address. It's a pointer pointing to the first location of your array. It's pointing to array zero. And each element is an integer. Each integer is four bytes. So the total 10, 10 elements would be 40 bytes. That is the output of our size of functions. All right, size of gives you the total size. So if we change it to double, the output would be, what is the out output if it's a double? Int is 32 bits, right? Double is 64 bits. So it's, it's 80 bytes. 80 bytes, because each double is 80 bytes. If it's 10 elements, total will be 80 bytes. So how can you get the number of elements? What you can do is you can divide by size of double, right? It will give you the size of double. Size of double is eight. So if you divide 80 by eight, you can get 10 elements. This is what you can get. You can get the 10 elements. This is how you can get the size of an array. Only when you know the size, right? Only when you know the size in the function. And we said the array names is just a pointer, right? It's just a, an address pointing to the first element of your array. You will see what do I mean by that. Remember that? All right, so a typical way, uh, so we will learn how to dynamic, dynamically allocate an array in the future when we learn the uh, new and also malloc in, in the older C ways, how can we dynamically allocate a new array? But for now, when you declare a, an array, it should be uh, fixed the size, right? This is the typical way we define an array. We first give it capacity. Capacity means the total number you can hold, right? Like the room. We can hold maybe 100 students, but the number of students may be less than 100, right? So that is called a capacity. We give it a, the maximum number we can have in your array. It's a guess, right? It's a guess. We, we guess, okay, the total number of students should be less than 100, so we put 100 seats. That is the capacity means. So, uh, Initialization would be very similar to the factors, right? You can write factors like this way, or you can do something like this. But this one is slightly different. It only initializes the first element. And uh, we said we can we should hold a const, a constant number to keep the capacity of an array. But the size is different, right? Size is different. For instance, if we, all right, let's write it in this way. We can have an uh, array, no, salaries, give it 100, right? What if I ask you, I will give you the salaries one by one and with negative one, if you guys can still remember the question, or we can say, uh, just to give you a sequence of numbers that is getting into the salary. Let's do something like this. <clears throat> C into S, if it is successful, we can get, put it into salary I, right? We haven't defined I, let's give it I equal to zero. And uh, each time after we do it, we plus plus, right? 
That is something we can do. First one, we define the total capacity, 100. And then we ask the user to keep input their new salaries. And for each new salary, I put it into my salary i. Right After salary i, I increment i. So that is the typical way we can get into unknown number of uh, salaries, right? So for a uh, typical way, well, what we would write is, okay, how about I want to print it, right? What is the size? We don't know the size yet, right? Sometimes we can output the whole capacity. Uh, we can say std c out your salaries i. <clears throat> Uh, let me give it a new line at the end and uh, each one separated by blank space. Right. But uh, maybe 100 is too much. Let's make it 20. It is expecting me to import something. One, two, three, four, command D. This is the salary array. Because we only input four elements, it will put four elements in the beginning of your array, right? For the remaining part, it's just some random numbers. Because I, when I initialize it, I didn't give a uh, initial number. So all the remainings are random numbers. So as you can see, because we don't have something like salaries.size, right? If we have it, we can put it in here, because we don't have it, we have to output the whole things, right? So that is the bad part about arrays. For arrays, you have to use a variable to always keep the size of your array. So you have to remember, indeed, you know the size. The size is i, right? Whenever you increment a little bit, whenever you uh, input a new variable, insert them into your array, you're incrementing i. Indeed, your i is counting how many arrays are there, uh, how many elements are there, right? So that is a typical way we do. And when you run it, one, two, three, four, right, you can output this. So that is the difference between array and a factor. For a factor, you can call dot size to get the size, but for arrays, you have to use a new variable to always remember what is the size. Whenever you increase one, you need to remember to increment your size. Whenever you delete one, you need to remember to decrement your size. So that is the bad part about uh, using the old arrays. But arrays are efficient. It's different from, uh, it will be efficienter than the uh, vectors, but uh, use it is a little bit tedious, all right? Remember the size. So this is a typical way we can access a, a one element of a, a vector, right? It is also the way we can access one element of an array. So these two are basically the same, right? So this is the way, as you can see, this is the way we can access one element in an array. It is exactly the same as the vectors. You can rewrite everything in vector or you can rewrite everything in array. It's a interchangeable, So here is a how we can implement it, uh, <clears throat> right? Uh, instead of uh, doing my way, it's it's increment size at the end, right? As you can see, increment the size at the end. What I did is I put a plus plus in here, but it's more confusing. But this way it's more clear, right? You are incrementing the size. Whenever you have a a new element, you increment the size, right? So that is the the way we can do. So this is the array way, as long as the size is less than capacity, right? We know the array should have some capacity, right? What we have defined is 20. How about we input more than 20 to it, right? So at that time, you will be out of bounds. So let's make it, for example, for example, make it two, right? Make it two. How about we input four numbers? It's still 
working, right? But it's some of the errors happening is because I am accessing out of your bounds. Your size is four, right? Your size is four. You are trying to access salary three, but your salary is size two, right? It will kill your program sometimes, but uh, most likely it will overwrite some part of your memory. It will overwrite some part of your memory. It's out of bounds. Any questions on it? It should be very similar to factor access, access, right? But the difference is if it's a factor, it will tell you it's out of bound for some of the compilers, right? The newer compilers can do that. But for arrays, we don't have that. Arrays never implement something like that. All right, you can go back and implement uh, on your own to see how it works. All right, we can pass our arrays as parameters to function calls, right? What we can do is, in this print function, right? This is just the print function. How can we rewrite it in a function? What we can do is, we can call it a print, right? The, the thing we need is one is the salary, another is the size. Right, we can get the pass this one and pass the size to it. This is a typical way. Indeed, we don't need these two. We can pass our arrays to a functions as parameters, then pass the size to it because our array don't have dot size function, right? We have to use a size, put it in here. And how can we call it? We call it like this, print our salaries and our size to it, right? And when we run it, we can see one and a two, right? It can print it. So in here, we are passing it as a parameter, right? It's an double array. It's a double array. And also, we gave it a size. So first the question, can we get a size in here, right? If we can remember, this is how we can get a size. Uh, no, no, no. Lowercase, size of salaries divided by size of double. Our first question would be, can we write something like this? For factors, we can get the size like salary dollar factor. And we said for arrays, we can get the size like this, right? Size of your array divided by size of a double. Uh, let me do it uh, anyway. So yeah, can we do that? Let's make it 100. And now we only need a print function, right? All right, let's get it here. Put a breakpoint in here to see what will happen. One, two, three, four. So we are in here now. Our salary, this is the address, all right? This is the address to your array. Let's see if we can see the address here. Yeah, this is the address. The array name is an address. It's a pointer to some place in your memory. This is the address. If you open it, as you can see, it's also a pointer, pointer to some double, right? The first element is one. If you go here, Run it once, size equal to one, size equal to one. It's not 100, it's not four, it's one, right? Let's do it in here. Let me put a breakpoint in here, breakpoint in here, run it, uh, read definition of size, delete it. All right, when in here, right? We are doing salary size divided by double size 
when we run it once, this size is 100. This size is 100. When we keep running, uh, it's expecting me to import something. All right, when we're in here, and when we run it once, the size is equal to one. All right, so let me explain it a little bit. So array names, array names are just the pointers, right? It's pointing to some location in your memory. And it only knows it's pointing to a double. It's a double array. It's a double array. So it knows it's pointing to someone who is double. But it doesn't know what's the size. When we call this function print and we give the salary to your functions, it only passing this address to it, whatever this address is, uh, maybe for B, some, some address, some address to this is the address, right? It's just a number. It's 0x, start with this 0x, it's base 16, base 16, right? Decimal is base 10, uh, no, decimal is base 10, binary is base two, right? This is x, it's base 16. It, it's just a number. This number is an address. It's an address pointing to the starting point of your array. The only thing the compiler knows is it's pointing to a double. It's pointing to a double. But it doesn't know what its size is. It doesn't, doesn't know that, right? So if I give you this and into it, it asks me the size of your salary. It basically gives you the size of the first element. Right? Then the size of double divided, you will get it just for one because you don't know the size. How about we give it a size? We give it a size 100. How about that? Uh, let, me, let me change it to another one. Change everything to integer. Would that be a problem? Integer. All right, let's rerun it. Again, this size is, uh, by the way, I am dividing by double. Let me change it to integer. Just to tell you, it doesn't matter which the type is. If it's outside, right? it knows the size is 100. It knows because in here, compiler knows the size is 100. And if you keep running, it's waiting for me to give some input. All right, when it runs in here, when we run it, it's a size of a pointer, size of a pointer divided by size of an integer, right? Size of a pointer divided by size of an integer. This seems weird, right? Let me do it another way. How about a char? about a character, right? Make it a character. Right, let's run it. In here, the size is still 100. It's good. Keep running. Let me give it three numbers. And if we are here, now the size is eight. It becomes more and more complex. So it basically says this size is size of a pointer. No matter it's a character or int or double, this guy is a fixed number. If we remove this part and uh, go back to int, uh, let's let's see. Yeah, it is tedious. Rerun it. Let me rerun it. Again, if we put a size of here, it's a size of the array. 
divided by size of a character. The size is 100, all right? One, two, three, wait a minute. I should be here. One, two, three. All right, if I'm in here, this one is eight byte. So no matter the type is, it's eight byte. Now it's a character, right? You can go back and check. What if it's an integer? Let me see if I can put it here. Yes, we run it. This one is, wait a minute, it's 400. Oh, because I didn't change this one. Sorry. We run it. The size is 100, it's correct. Continue, waiting for me to input, stop it. And uh, after I run it, size of is eight, right? So the thing I want to emphasize is here, compiler sees this guy is no longer an array, right? Compiler sees this one as a pointer. It's just the address, the pointer, the address to your memory. It's just an address, right? Whatever this address is, this is the value, value of it. And this guy, this address is eight bytes, which is 64 bits, right? It, it is the address length, address length of your, uh, of your functions. Like, let's look at this one. This is the address. Wait, oh, you cannot see it. This is the address, right? Zero X means it's a hex, it's base 16. Every one is four bits. Wait a minute, it, it's, it's one bit. Yeah, it's one six FD FF zero F eight. All right, F means 15. D is 13 maybe. Yeah, you can check that. So. What I want to emphasize is here, you cannot get size inside a function call because whenever it's passed to a function, it becomes a pointer, it becomes an address. It's no longer the array itself, right? No matter you write a size here or don't write a size here, it doesn't matter. It is exactly the same as this one, right? You can ignore the size. And sometimes people want to emphasize that by writing it as a pointer. Indeed, it's a pointer. It's nothing but a pointer. It's a address to your memory location. So if you want to pass it to your function call, you can pass it in this way or pass it in this way. Both are fine. It's totally fine. But uh, sometimes you don't want to emphasize it's an array, you can write it in this way, all right? So that's what I want to put in here. If you want to pass a function as a array parameter, remember when it passes to your function call, it becomes a pointer. It's an address, it's only an address. It's address pointing to the first location of your array. Nothing but that, all right? So you cannot get the size of A using this way. It only gives you the size of a pointer, right? What's the size of an address? It's not the size of an array anymore. Even if you give the size here, it really doesn't matter. Any questions? You can test this code, test this piece of code, you will see the difference. I know it's sometimes it's confusing because you haven't learned a pointer yet, right? It's confusing, but remember to use, if you want to use arrays, use it in this way. So another, another part of that it would be confusing is, let me, uh, let me put it back. Another thing that some beginner might have confusion is the assignment, right? We said in our factors, we can do something like this. VEC one equals to one, two, three, four, right? And uh, 
we can create another vector BEC2. Uh, let's copy BEC1 to it. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. How about we wanted to do it in arrays, array one equals one, two, three, four. How about we want to give array two to array one? There will be some errors. Assign array to another array in initialization. How about we do that? Five, six, seven, eight. Can we do array two, assign array one? Cannot do that because array cannot do assignment, right? But you can do array, but you can do vector two, assign as a vector one here. It's, so for factors, it's easier to use, but for arrays, not so easy because array one, remember, it's an address. Array two is an address. You're basically assigning some address to another address. You're trying to copy all the elements, but indeed it's not. You cannot do that. So your compiler would disallow you to do that, right? Forbid you to do that. So a little bit complex. And uh, can we do that? Can we do something like this, right? Can we do this? No, we cannot. We can do something like this, right? Empty vector, no problem. But we cannot initialize a an empty array. We said array size has to be fixed, right? You have to give it a size, right? Like 10, 11, 2, anything. But this one is fine because it knows the size is 4, right? When you initialize it, it knows the size is something like this because it doesn't know the size of the array. Compiler doesn't know how many space, right? What the space it should allocate to you. So you have to give it initial space. What you can do is, a little bit complex, you can define a pointer, right? The array is nothing but an address. You can assign an address to another address, array one. This is valid. This one is valid. You're assigning your array name. Array name is an address, it's a pointer to another guy, right? And what you can do is, how about print array two with size four? You can do that. It can output these one, two, three, four to it, right? So pointers and array names are interchangeable sometimes, but you cannot assign some new arrays to a old array or some, something like that. And also because they are pointing to the same location, because they are pointing to the same location, when we are trying to modify this one to be 10, if we want to output this, it will also change array one, right? Whenever we change array two, we are also change array one because they are As you can see, array one, the uh, third element of array one is also changed to 10, right? How about in here, if we assign factor two, if we want to see out factor one's second element, we can run it. The first one doesn't change because factor assignment, it copies everything. It copy, it's a new copy. So factor two and factor one are different copies. They are in different uh, locations in your memory. So when you change factor two, factor one doesn't change, all right? But for arrays, array one is an address pointing to some space. And you, when you are assigning it to another pointer, it basically pointing to the same location. It's like a reference, right? And also when you change it, it will be modified. Right? It will be modified because these two pointing to the same location. What you can do is, okay, how about it's a reference, right? If it's a reference, 
the story will change because it's a reference. These two pointing to the same location. And whenever you change one, another one is also changed. So pointers and the reference are very similar. Pointers and the reference are very similar. If you want to implement something like this, yeah, uh, modify one, then modify another, you could use reference, right? This is something we have learned before. But if we don't use a reference, it's a copy. It's a copy of new factor. If you change one guy, the other guy doesn't change. If for arrays, if you copy the array, if you assign the address to another array, the old one is also changed, right? So similar. So similar thing here is if we want to print array one with size four, if we do this, and somehow in here, somehow in here, we change this element to be, for example, nine, it will also change array one. Because array one and a salary, they are pointing to the same location, right? the same memory space. Whenever you change salaries, whenever you change salaries, you will also change array one. Let's print array one, third element. All right, first one is the print function, output one, two, three, four. And finally, we see out this array one's third element, which is becomes nine, right? Passing arrays is the same as passing the address. Because it's passing the address, these two arrays are operating on the same memory space. Because they're operating on the main, the same memory space, whenever you change, I would change, right? So that is the arrays. So any questions on it? So understanding arrays, you have to understand the address, the pointers. That's also why I would suggest you to use factors, because factors are uh, easier to use. No questions? Clear? All right, let's uh, go to auto bound access. We have tried that, right? Sometimes your machine will crash, but sometimes it won't. Let's do size. This one is auto, auto bound, right? Let's try that. Yeah, it is still valid, right? It still allows you to access salaries for, but it's just, Indeed, it's out of your bound. It's indeed out of your bound. Anyway, so it's totally valid. No one will check that because in arrays, we don't have the checking. We don't have the size information in, in our arrays. The only information is the starting point, starting location. Other than that, we don't have any information. But for factors, we have the size. So we can check, is it out of bound? But for arrays, we don't have that. It's the programmer's uh, job to uh, make, making sure everything is under control, right? So um, we say we have learned many things, right? We have learned the first guy is passing by address. Right? It's act actually copying address, passing by pointers, we sometimes call it. Second one is passing by values, right? It's passing by values. So we have learned that. We also learned passing by reference, right? We could also passing by reference to change some of them. And uh, because it's passing by pointers, we don't need a reference to it. We say we use reference because we want to modify it inside our function calls. But if we use passing by address, we don't need a reference, right? We can directly modify the data here. Whenever we, we modify inside our functions, Outside functions, it will also change because they are pointing to the same location. So that is the passing by pointers, right? Because it's an address. It's an address. We don't need a reference. And if we don't want the user to change our code, we can do similar things as reference, put a const here, right? Let's do it here. If we put a const here, now salaries is read only. You cannot assign 
new variable to any part of the salary, right? Because salary is a read only, it's const, constant. So it's very similar to a uh, factor, right? It's uh, If it's a factor, you do const uh, factor int reference of variable name, right? Something like that. So the const, it's always a good habit to put a const if you don't want to modify the code and modify the, the content of your something that's pointed by the same location, right? If it's passed by reference, passed by pointers, if you don't, don't want to modify it, add a const here so that you will not accidentally modify the values. And uh, uh, another one is uh, for this one, yeah. Uh, this one is something include all the three types of passing, right? Passing by pointers, passing by value, passing by reference, right? Passing by pointer, value, reference. If you understand these three ways of passing, you almost um, understand everything about the passing references or passing parameters in a function call. And in the future, we learn this guy can also be a pointers. We, we will uh, learn how to use that, but uh, not today's class. Uh, you can try to rewrite this part, all right? And the next important thing is how can we return an array, right? So let's do this. If it's a vector, one, two, three, four, right? Can we return some array that is, uh, for example, called accumulate, accumulate equals to, uh, make it smaller. of our factor, All right? So what do we do is, let me show it here. Uh, we will return a factor, right? We will return a factor of int. This one is called accumulate. And uh, because we don't want to change it, we could make it a constant reference, the original factor, right? And in here, we can create a new one, a new factor, let's call it ACCU. And at the end, we can return this guy, right? Let's see, how can we do accumulate? What do we mean by accumulate? Well, let's try it this way. If factor equals to one, two, three, then return one, three, six, right? How about do this? It's indeed not that hard to implement. Int i equal to zero, i less than vector the size, plus plus i, right? We are iterating through all the elements. And uh, right, let, let's, let's just assume this factor is not empty. The push back, factor dot first element. Let's make the first element into it. Then for every accumulate, we need to push back the last element plus the new element of factor. Forget about what's the uh, content about here. So uh, let's assume this can work, okay? Uh, I haven't implemented a print function. Let's call it a print function. Print, delete the All right, so let's do this const factor int reference salary star size. All right, so these two functions are exactly the same, right? 
The first one is printing an array. Second one is printing a vector. For arrays, you need the size. For factors, you can call the size in here, right? You can get the size in here. So these two are exactly the same. And as you can see, I also use the same name for it. I use also use the same name for it. It is allowed in C++ as long as your parameters are different. The input is different. So they have different signatures for your functions, right? So these two will be two different functions. They will call the correct function uh, based on your your parameters. If your parameter is a vector, it will call this function. If your parameter is a array and uh, with two parameters, it will call this function. It's okay to write uh, this kind of functions using the same name. All right, so let's forget about it. Let me do print your factor. Um, forget about the remaining first. No. Print the base. All right, it seems working, right? One, three, six, ten. All right, so let's do it for the arrays. How about if it's arrays? Can we do accumulate? Can we do accumulate? If it's accumulate, we would do similar things like this, right? We need to give the array. Then we need to give the size because we cannot get the size by itself. So we have to put a size here. Uh, let me call it a VC so that I can ignore the name. Call object int. What's, what's the problem? Oh, all right, size. All right, so it should be something like this, right? Uh, by the way, you cannot return a factor. Let's return int array. Can you do a size here? Because you know the size, right? Can you do a size here? Let me let me first forget about it. Zero should be factor of zero, right? You first keep the first element, then this guy's ith element equals to accumulate i minus one element plus this ith element. I'm trying to make sure these two functions are exactly the same. And at the end, I want to return this accumulate, right? It, it, can we, for, for instance, if, because we are returning an int array, right? Can we return something like this? It's not allowed because you are not allowed to put a brackets in here. You, sh you need to have a uh, something called the, the, the address, right? But we know how to make an address, right? Can we return something like this? Right, almost done, right? We're almost done. So uh, let's do accumulate. In order to do that, we said we need to give a new array, right? A new array in here. Let's call it array two. Let's print array two. The first thing, similar to what we have done, you cannot initialize an array like this way. Right? You cannot do that. We have tried that. You should make it a pointer. You, you only need to keep the first element. Right? You, the only thing you need to know is the first element of your uh, array. So you can keep something like this. No problem. Uh, no match function call for something like this, or because I forgot to give it the size. Right? And uh, now you get the pointer. How about I print it? And this one I don't need. Uh, anyway. So when you run it, right, you are expecting one, three, six, ten. But it's indeed giving you some very weird numbers. As you can see, they are basically the same, right? Basically the same. Define a vector, define an array, the first element. The first element, right? Then get a new element, get a new element, then return this array, return this factor, right? The reason this one is wrong is because 
let me explain it here. So it's allocated in some temporary space, which will be released after this function call ends. So what happened in here, right? We're doing basically the same thing. If you say that, this guy will also be released, right? This guy will be also some garbage. But it's not the case. If it's a vector, when you return a vector, you are returning the whole object. In the future, when we learn class and object, we are returning the whole object. We are using this object to construct a new object. We are copying all the data, like copying a vector, copying a vector to another vector, right? We are copying all the elements. We are copying all the elements. So this ACC will remember all the data of your return values. Yes, it's remembering all the data. So it's okay if you release the space, right? Belongs to these functions. But for array, it's different. If you find your array in here, you are returning only this address. You are not returning all the elements. You are only returning this address. When you give this address to someone in the main function, because the, at this time, the function call ends, that address is pointing to some garbage place. And if you're trying to print it, it will give you some garbage, All right? So that is the difference between array and vectors. It's also why I would suggest you to use vectors, right? Use vectors in this way, instead of using arrays as a return values. If you want to return you, the only thing you can return is the pointer, the address. But for vectors, you can return the whole vector. It contains all the elements, contains the size, contains everything. But for arrays, you don't. All right, any questions? It'll be hard to understand for now, at least. But uh, one suggestion is always use factors, unless in the future you learn exactly what pointers or address these guys means. Right? Always use factors. It's safe. It's easy to use. It's slower a little bit than arrays. Any questions? No? Let's see what do we have left. All right. The next question is, how can we resize an array? We said we cannot, right? But in the future, when we learn dynamic allocation, we can resize it. But resize a vector is very easy. Whenever you push back, it increases the size. Whenever you pop back, you are decreasing the size, right? And also, you can write a piece of code to check the size when you are pushing back the vectors one by one. So let me finish this one and uh, uh, quickly do that. So we said when we are defining an array, we are actually uh, first using a capacity, right? To remember what is the total size or the, what is the maximum size a, um, an array could hold. So what we can do is we can also define something like this, a factor. Uh, it's a new name, give it a two. What we can do is uh, just to give it a 10 times, less than 10, plus plus. What we do is factor two do dot push back, I. We want to find out what is the size and the capacity of a factor. So factor also have a capacity. Uh, let's see out. Vector two dot size, then vector two dot capacity. Right. We are trying to push back one by one. Let me run it. Initially, the size and the capacity are both zero. Capacity is zero, remember? And when you're trying to push back in an array, it'll be out of bound, right? In an, if it's an array, if the array's capacity is zero, it will be out of bound. But for a vector, because it can automatically resize it itself, it will increase the capacity by one, it will become capacity one, and the size will be one, right? Next, when we do another pushback, it's also, out of your capacity, right? So it's basically double its capacity from one to two and insert an, a new element. 
now the size and the capacity are equal. It means all the locations are used. Whenever you want to push back, it's also outside of your capacity. So it will double its capacity, insert a new element, the size becomes a three, and the capacity becomes four. Next, when you want to push back a new one, because the size is less than the capacity, you don't need to resize your array, right? You can uh, keep your current capacity, then uh, push back a new one, right? Now your size is four. And then if you're trying to push back a new one, the size would uh, exceed your capacity. What it does is double your capacity, then insert a new one, right? So it's basically factors will automatically double its capacity each time. Whenever it's not enough to hold the uh, element, it will double the size, double the capacity, and push back the element at the end. So this one, when you learn the algorithms, in, you know it's amortized the cost, right? It amortized to every operation. The cost is const. It's very efficient way. So it's uh, another story. You don't have to know it. It's just easy to check it. So yeah, 